Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to look at every Cool Keith album. Holy shit. We have 50 albums to look at roughly. I didn't even count. It's so many. It's incredible. It's so many. But I wanted to make this video because Cool Keith is my favorite rapper. <laughs> Everyone who meets me in my life always has to hear about him. So I want to get it off my chest. I want to talk about every fucking album that he did. So I came up with the structure in order to tackle this task because I didn't want to go chronologically because Cool Keith's work chronologically doesn't make much sense because he has so many different styles and variations and alter egos and teaming up with other people make forming a group while simultaneously dropping five other albums solo which have nothing to do with the other thing so sorting his albums chronologically didn't make sense to me so I came up with this structure where I separate his albums into certain categories I have categories for example one is called the beasts where I look at masterpieces like sextile dr. doom dr. octagon diesel truckers uh, ultra things like that they have a different category, for example, called groups, where he teams up with other rappers that are equally strong, equally taking part in the project, things like Analog Brothers, KHM, Claybone Family, Project X, things like that. So I have different categories all throughout the video, which each contain certain albums that I specifically, individually will take a look at and present to you. So I hope you enjoyed this video and bear in mind this was all stream of consciousness. There will be a lot of jump cuts because I'm not a pro talker. And bear in mind when I talk about the albums I'm merely talking from my perspective, from my personal taste. This video was created within a range of one year. I've been working on it for a year on and off because he has so many albums and meanwhile while I was doing this video I was trying to get all his albums and I can gladly say by now everything that is right now available online I have. I have every fucking album. If it's possible to get it on vinyl and CD I do have that. So I have roughly 100 Cool Keith albums in my humble home. Achievements. Without further ado let's get this journey started. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. I mean my stuff has been so different from everybody else's stuff to people think that maybe I'm weird. You know, I had people around me down in every little thing that I made, every cover, you know, everything that I wanted to do, from the shirt to advertisement to me being Dr. Octagon. Oh, fucking right. Okay, the first category is a strong category. I wouldn't call it Cool Keith teams up with a strong producer. So we have Cool Keith and 5471, 5471. Then we have Cool Keith and Dennis Death, Bikinis and Thongs, Mr. No Get Go, Project Polaroid. And now we gotta talk about Mr. No Get Go. Moving at rocket sonic speed with bonnet knees. Courting hemisphere rock space banks with space tanks. Hydrogen atoms tick together. Stars protrude above stick together. Where well, he teamed up with producer is real. This is a great album. It's a slept on album. I don't know why. Didn't really get major publicity or whatever. I don't remember how I found out about it. I think just doing my research, like actually looking to find Cool Keith records. Every once a year or maybe once per two years, just checking on all the albums he has. Just making sure to somehow get as many as I could afford or I'm glad I did my research. It's a sci-fi themed 50s movies-ish album with film samples and whatnot. First banger I want to show you is Bionic Fuse. Gamma Ray Bands keep me in car, Godzilla versus like King Kong, sideline promoter, Dr. Sog. $200,000 legs made in acrylic aluminum, 700 miles an hour, you see the fastest men. And another really strong song from of that album is Celestial. Incredible top race speed, moving fast as lunar light. With lunar hype, they can't sample, they can't use the lunar right. I taught the scientific study to a buddy. There's also another song that which I really really like which would be my third favorite song of that album is Life Dissection but we're not going to listen to that. I want to show you Alpha and Omega because I think that song is probably most representative of the whole album. So check out Alpha and Omega. I was Bobby Brown of my group. Just like no addition. Eight million songs recorded. Check the store for everything. I put out they reordered. The Alpha and Omega. All right, so if you like that style, if you like what you heard, the sci-fi, definitely check out Mr. No Gut Go. 
And next, let's talk about Cool Keith teaming up with Dennis Deft. This is 50-50. We have 50% Cool Keith and 50% Dennis Deft. Maybe a bit more Dennis Deft, actually. And Beats by Yet I Beat. Got a red bone, she look good. Eyes look, man, I don't, I can't explain it. What can you say about that album? It's, it's a hit and miss. Like, there's a couple of hits and there's a couple of misses. If I'm really honest, the songs that I would actually pick to listen, like I wouldn't listen to everything, I would skip. There would be maybe four songs left out of 12. So the ratio is not that good, but those four songs I really, really like. I really, really like the song, Give It To You Girl. It puts me in a good mood, it's, check it out. And luckily, the other song that I really, really like is the song that follows this song, so don't have to even skip it, is Nasty Girl. Check it out. Yo, we collecting money from these women who are nasty, who only want me because I roll that S class C, or that Jack D, with that big fire baggy, feeling like Ray J after hitting Kim Kardashian. Definitely check it out. Songs in between, they're not, they're not super bad, they're okay. But it's just, I guess the overall feel or mood of the album is not my usual go-to mood in rap music. It sounds like a beach album you would listen to on the beach and I'm not, you know, I don't, I'm not on the beach often. Definitely check it out if you like those songs and you wouldn't mind weaker versions of that style, check it out. Let's look at Idea of a Masterpiece where you teamed up with the Japanese guys. This is an amazing album. It's weird, it's, I would say it's one of the nerdiest albums that he had. It's very, it has computerish sound effects, kind of almost annoying beats that are really layered, but I wanna say almost annoying because it's actually, it's borderline. It's either you get super annoyed by this album or you can appreciate it like I do. The quality of the album is kind of weird, the audio quality, like Cool Keefs. The whole time he sounds kind of nasally and like if he's he would be recorded in a bathroom or something like that like the mic is not really close to him or i don't know but it works it kind of it gives it this raw style unpolished style it's a strange album but in a really good way it's musically very enticing my number one favorite song of this album is number one draft pick <laughs> And also another really strong song to me is The King Is Here. Being out of the UFO window pane, that's my luggage, the bags the claim. Shakespeare is here, the king is near, your destiny, my journey, top area. You're the snake man, sneak this man. Released in 2009, very very strong. Unfortunately, I did. I don't think there's a vinyl version of this, so only on CD. But cop it, it's good. Okay, the last of those four in that category is Project Polaroid. Project Polaroid, everything full blast Android. Released in 2006, here he teams up with Tom C3 and they create this fucking awesome album. Even the cover art is amazing. Unfortunately, I was still not able to get a vinyl off of this because when I saw it, it was like 200 euros, something like that. <sighs> this album is fucking fantastic. Let's go right to my favorite song, Rhyme That Quit. Fuck me, when I heard that song, it's still, I get goosebumps. It's so, it's kind of a haunting song. Check it out for yourself. The bars is open. Everybody order your M stell. Put the hot dog on the grill. Roll that fell. Don't tell blunt about the new dance. Call the elephant front. With Kelly this month. The bellies we hunt. The pack bell phone, the sellies we want. So why is this album so great? A couple of people came together and they really wanted to create exactly this album. It has a very specific sound to it. The whole album goes through very smoothly. It's There's no break in style, nothing. It's very consistent. Organic, I want to say. It doesn't sound like computer music. It sounds like handmade with a really old sampler, if you know what I mean. It has life to it, it has soul to it, like this music is breathing. Another great song would be Diamond District. 
check it out. My service status conduct the lyrical instructors of the BX. Bruckner to something, the upscale division. Up shift, switch up, lift, mix up, quick stuff. Hype stuff is sick stuff. If you like Cool Keith, you already have this. Obviously, if you're curious about Cool Keith, you should definitely check this out because it's one of his strongest albums, yet maybe least known albums. Which makes sense because, you know, it's just called Project Polaroid. The fake soundtrack to the movie. Definitely check it out. Strong fucking album. Don't sleep on it. Okay, so now I want to look at more recent releases, naming the Teixando set Preacher, Eldorado Driven, Magnetic Pimp Felt Force Field, Time Astonishing, Demolition Crash, Love and Danger, Controller of Trap, Teixan Dorset, the remix album, Teixan Dorset, Couple of Slices, and Feature Magnetic. Okay, first off, let's talk about Couple of Slices. There is a beautiful girl out there. She's so pretty. A couple of slices is a very dreamy, lofty, very airy, floaty album. It's really nice. Definitely not an intense listen. It seems more like a production where the beats were delivered by the producer and sent to Cool Keith, and he was writing his lyrics and recording it by himself. It doesn't seem like they actually hooked up for this project. Um, so you kind of can tell. Nonetheless, this is a great album. It's very, it's it's more pop than rap, I want to say. Just the feel to it. it. It's a very easy listen. And it has some great songs, namely Running the Field with this very hypnotizingly dreamlike melody floating on. I'm so young like Diggy Simmons, they 80 something. I put the bombs in the orange Halloween pumpkin. Block your dunk sideways, I just jumped in. I'm running the field. Another great song would be I Know a Girl. Beat with my basketball, two socks like Gus Williams. These dudes acting bad because they go on steel rims. A grown man on steroids. And MC tryouts. Call Mexico back and speak to senoritas. Cut some rats and pack them all in the pita. These niggas sneak up, I sleep with a meat cleaver. It's a great album, it's really nice. It's great to listen to. And the other one is Time Astonishing with the producer Laurent. Pick, see how you describe it. Don't try to be stars in disguise. Anybody rapping with a vagina go be with the wife and kids. Released in 2015 on Mellow Group Music, they are releasing a ton, a shitload of really, really high quality releasing rappers I have never heard anything before. So they bring a lot of attention to good, good, good music. And this is also an example. Radioactive waveform, the pedigree is newborn. Rap crisis is the form. The six hand unicorn, the character got the track going spawn. This is good, this is good music. Especially, you gotta point out, it's not so much Cool Keith's part in this, but it's the production by the producer Laurent, Laurent, I don't know how to say it. It's a very dense album, a concept driven album, has a lot of sound snippets in it. Also reminiscent of like maybe the 50s or something like that, like old records, spoken word stuff, or maybe like uh, what we would call a tech talk nowadays. Memorized thought, easy violated. Porno demonstrated. Everything TV related. It kind of has this vibe to it. It's, it seems like a kind of intellectual approach to hip hop music, which I always like if people try to give the production a more layered approach experimental stuff i like that it's not always my like go-to favorite music style but i do appreciate it a lot i like that we have producers out there to give rap music or hip-hop music this variety so Laurent Laurent does exactly that so this is a great album the only down point i find is similar to a couple of slices i feel the beats already the whole concept existed and were passed on to cool keith and he wrote his stuff to it so that's, I don't know, it feels like a little disconnect there. Cool Keith is just very sparse on this one. It feels like it's very melody driven or like uh, in instrumentally driven. And Cool Keith is like, maybe like a spoken word guy who is just given commentary. But the main focus are the melodies and beats. But those melodies and beats are great. So this is overall a good album. So definitely check it out. Next one, the first, the original Teixando set from 
It's produced by DJ Junkers Lou. It's a great record. It's really good. I like it very much. It's uh, it has strong productions. The songs are pretty pretty different types of songs, but they have this overall theme of I want to say like Indian or definitely Middle East kind of melodies, which are yeah really nice. I love the song Flow Smooth. It's a very minimalistic song. I like how the bass kicks in. I like this teeny tiny kind of fragile melody only on top. Actor skill is overcrowded with nothing right now. Everybody's bluffing right now. Waste of film and camera time. Trying to expose yourself to the masses with a camera rhyme. But there's a lot of really strong songs on this album. Glamour Life is really good. You ever try to wonder? Glamour Life. My verses appear in your glamour like spiritual scriptures, like the city reminiscing. La Cha Cha is, it seems like it would be in danger of being really poppy just because of the sample or the melody, but it's not poppy. It's still, it stays within hip hop and it's a good, good, smooth, melodic rap song. So your neck relax against my fists. You get it, your neck relax against my fists. Been here since you was drinking sun kiss. Don't let me don miss. Indian. That's a good song. Industry. Yeah, it's just, it's a lot of really good, strong songs. It's a, it's a good album, definitely, for sure. We have Love and Danger. This is, I think, the US version. This is the European version. Slight differences. I prefer this one, actually. Mainly, probably, because it's the first one I listened to. The vinyl version I only gotten recently. So, this is what's in my head. And I love this album. <laughs> I really I listen to this album a lot mainly in summertime because I feel it's I don't know it, it kind of it has a lightness to it. it doesn't take itself very seriously there like some really kind of silly tracks for example uh, cowboy howdy you can't handle scramble sample Atlanta Georgia how's that for you yeah cowboy howdy it's it's a really it's a playful song I like that it's a funny song it's very entertaining just as the whole album is on this one I definitely prefer the intro it's a very strong intro I think there is no song on this album which is like totally annoying or which I really really want to skip well maybe the game is free it's not my favorite song but it's okay, it's still okay. I'm, I might not even skip it. I'm just breezing through. My favorites, oh yeah, I keep forgetting. It's kind of weird. Um, the last song, Goodbye Rap. I don't know why I keep forgetting that it's basically on this album. I think it kind of falls a bit to the wayside, but not in a bad way. It's just not as congruent or as coherent uh, style-wise, but it's a really good song. I love that song. This song is the last song. I quit rap, couldn't find competition. I threw hip hop in the garbage. The Rock Hall of Fame had to pay homage while everybody was fat cooking sausage. I remember back in the day, 2012, when he released the video, I was actually thinking, oh fuck man, is he really quitting his career? Is that it? Which would have been terrible. But luckily, <laughs> it definitely isn't it. He keeps producing and we're still blessed to receive and receive and receive. Anyway, so. Love and Danger, definitely a really good album, strong album. Check it out. Those last three, I can't really say that much about them because I, to be honest, they aren't really in my music rotation. But I was skipping through them again and I found probably production-wise, this one is the strongest. The first song is really good, I like it. The rest, it's just not really, the style is just not really my taste at the moment, so. I'm probably gonna get around to listen to this more. The first song called Thundercats, that, it's a banger, it's really good. I fly through the airport, tank top and fly shorts. NBA dunk shot, LeBron Jamie. I took his girl Amy, coming through the lane. Magnum on the D-Lang, I whispered on the air rings. Next one is the second Tayshaun Dorset album, The Preacher, where he teams up with uh, DJ Junkers Lou from, uh, I think Paris, France, definitely from France. All the wigs get a spank. Um, e didn't really listen to it. I skipped through the songs. I let you press me. You don't impress me. It's not totally bad, but it's just 
it's definitely not as good as the first one. That's just how it is. Then we have Eldorado Driven, where he teams up with Teddy Bass as a producer, I think, mainly. It's... It's okay, it's not that bad. There are actually a few good songs. I would say the best song from what I heard is Walk on Water and Boss to the Banger. Those were quite okay because they have some nice synth melodies going on, which I like. Boss to the banger. The taste of color recording in Vancouver Park paints some music. Seattle Seahawk, custom to the starter roll. I can switch and play in the starter's mode. Play Mobile, Alabama, open the pack. Overall, haven't really listened to this album. Probably gonna get around it. I I guess, I don't know. It's it's okay. It's it's nothing really special. Also within this group, I want to put Demolition Crash from 2014, where again he teamed up with DJ Junkers Lou. And they made an album which is 34 tracks heavy. I haven't really listened to it. I skipped through songs and I want to show you 500 horsepower. I take them out to dinner when I send a friend to Kenner when I spend them on the make a minute. Phantom cop it, don't rent it. Push the record independent. Get the house full with tennis, baseball, nine innings. Niggas see my sign winning. Also into this category, I want to put the album Feature Magnetic, released on Mellow Group Music or Mellow Music. In 2016, it's mainly produced by himself under his name, number one producer. And my favorite song from this album would be Tired. Tired of everybody knowing where I'm at, my whereabouts. Rappers who ain't recording, just sitting home chewing bean sprouts. Lazy boys who sink in the couch, that's why I'm tired. Feature Magnetic overall was kind of a letdown to me. It just didn't feel like a lot of heart went into the production, into the concept. It, it's maybe a little bit rushed. I don't think those the songs on Feature Magnetic are any particularly good, except for Tired. Next, I want to talk about the awesomeness, which is Controller of Trap. Y'all see me on television, the man that drives his cars into the kitchen. Women love me like George Benson. Rolls Royce, this is the 10th one. Red carpet with Jane Dickerson. Ocean Avenue Records presents Cool Keith, Controller of Trap. Produced by Andrew Dolan, Controller of Trap is an amazing album. I fucking love that album. It was released exactly one year ago, 2018 in June. Listen to it. Got fucking blizzledy blizzle on green tea and I was blown away. I was super fucking hyped for it. And now it's exactly one year later and I'm still fucking hyped about this album. First song already is right out of the gate. Don't be shy. Check it out. Don't be shy. Words to the editor. I would love to check in the Sahara in Vegas with Adrian Moore. Upscale talent with the jacuzzi built in the middle of the sweet floor. As a classy way to convince her high heels, her up in the use the tone of my voice for sexual intercourse. I love the whole instrumental arrangement on this album. It kind of sounds like 80s synth, but yet it doesn't. Just really dynamic and really vibrant. Love a chick, a ugly bitch. 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 Controller of Trap has 12 tracks and Every single track is amazing. Songs like Don't Be Shy, Bottle Pop, Life Is Hard, Mug Up. I'm just reading the track list because every song is fucking awesome. A track that I really fucking like is Rapid Chance. Check it out. It's a very catchy hook as well. Rapid Chance. Farmer suits and farmland. See my arm on a box of arm and hammer, man. I thought the count was moist. How come I'm on dry land? A lot of artists in the business bluffing. Cooking with pots and pans. VH1 with Miss New York. They ain't even better than the Rapid Chance. How you look in the tank at the fish glance? A and R, the vocal so good in pan. This album has only two features on it, and one of it is literally bizarre, which is bizarre. You might know him from D12, and his verse is just so fucking weird. He raps about that girls were just trying to get on his dad's dick and shit like that. It's fucking absurd. Great, amazing, entertaining track. General managing. Can you handle that? On the carpet, they basic with a black men's warehouse tux. Infiltrate they sports, see what they false illustrate. I watch them get rehabilitated. You perpetrate like you never work naked. A cartoon posing in the USA Today paper. The mink robe knock on the door of your naughty neighbor. Look on the court. I'm a GM now. You one of the players. I'm general manager. Can you handle that? General manager. 
it says trap on it but to me it just doesn't really sound like trap I, at least what I thought trap would sound like because I actually like this but I don't like to listen to trap music but this is pretty awesome even though it's synth music it has warmth to it and depth warmth depth a lot of stuff with TA so yeah man controller of trap amazing fucking album and I can't wait for the vinyl release so Andrew Dolan get this vinyl out there I need to cop it this is a great, amazing album. Congratulations. I love it. General Manager. General Manager. Can you handle that? General Manager. Next one, we can talk about the legend of Teshar Noset. I'm bound to get ill. Hit the PJ parade. My daily brigade. Cooler than that glass nigga dressed up like a char Kool Aid. Which is the remix album of the original Teshar Noset. It's okay. It's all right. Teshar. But the stronger album is the first, the original Teishan set. Okay, so next let's have a look at his collaborations. He has done multiple with KJM, Analog Brothers, Claiborne Family, and The Undertakers. KJM dropped in 2002 and is his collaboration with H-Bomb, aka Jackie Jasper and Mark Life. KJM is a very aggressive album. It sounds very uh, analog, synthy, heavy, so it's kind of similar to the Analog Brothers album. The song Really Want You sets the tone straight away. No guys like y'all who talk a lot be whacking off. I own New York like the back of my hand. You need to dance now, cause I'ma bring back American bandstand. Move out and flirt, watch folds attack front with private jet work. And TV front you in the back, you get jerk. One of the strongest songs on the album is Nice Things. It's it's just this really driven song going straight forward and you have all these nice synthy sounds. Always have the feeling there's some lasers in the background it's been shot. So there's a lot going on for your ears, left and right, and just floating around. Another song I want to highlight is the song New York, where you have this alarm sound embodying basically the whole aggressiveness of this album. It's a battle rap album. Tell you New York is on lockdown. The city is my boo. You should have called up Clue and made appointments. I'm qualified in the metropolitan area. I should have been on the professional too. None of y'all rappers don't have a rule. Market a plan out there. Y'all know what to do. All three rappers work together very well, like the transitions or the um, exchanges that they have. They just complement each other really well. The aggressiveness and raspy voice of Jackie Jasper and the deep raspy voice of Mark Life and the cuckoo high pitched voice of Cool Keith. Unimportant material niggas. Y'all some lucky charm serial niggas. Fuck miscellaneous party, summer jam action. Granted, towards the end it fizzles out a bit, like the last two, three songs, it just it wears off a bit, but all in all, it's a very strong album. It's a very homogenous, coherent album. So definitely recommend KHM. Two years later, they released Claybone Family. Same rappers again, we have Cool Keith, Mark Life and Jackie Jasper and this time around they call themselves Claybone Family. So all in all I would say this is the weaker album compared to KHM. Just my personal taste because I find it's not as significant as KHM. To me there isn't a specific mood or ring to it that comes to mind when I think of Claybone Family. But don't get me wrong, each song, they're pretty strong, they're good songs, but it's just the overall theme and tone of the album is just not as significant anymore. Although I want to highlight one song, which is New York City, although that song doesn't even represent the album because it's very soft, it's very popish or R&B-ish, it doesn't represent the tone of the album at all. Like it's this one song that sticks out for being not, for not fitting at all, but it's the strongest song, New York City. I just really wanna go to New York City, New York City. I just really wanna go to New York City, New York City. 
city's finest The added attraction next to the man Popular name, I'm Mark Minus And the other strong song or strongest song that is uh, totally in tone of the album would be Let Me Show Em Very aggressive, dynamic, straightforward Pretty damn good song It's scary how we creep through the fog and creep through the small Sleep on you all I don't care about you, my snare will stomp you oh. Your whole album Bottom line, Claybone family, no song is that special. They're just, they're a little bit bland. Strong songs, but not special. The next album I want to talk about is an album I do not own on CD or vinyl because I don't think it is out there somewhere. Maybe a few copies. It's the album called Project X where Cool Keith teams up with Tim Dog, who we know from the Ultra Big Time album, and with Mark Life again, who we know from KHM and Claiborne. What can I say about Project X? Project Whack. They want to see it. The whole block's under attack. I feel free. Uh. 93 rhymes back. No label. Nah. No support. Just hustle money. Chicks on the street. Lives on the beat. It's not really great. It's kind of like a gangster rap album, but the beats are very uninspired and very early 2000s. I'm not digging it. It has a club feel to it, but it's not not in a good way. Let's check out Iconic. Get him, get him, get him. My game is obnoxious. Girls turn dark chocolate. They don't want to mob flick the pot. They slap dance and bob quick logical optic Fiber force that's me on the cover of the sword Ring tone of a bitch and switch off Large like that Spanish group Molotov They quiet when I cough A song that I did like when skipping through is Sex is a Must Check it out You see the pinky ring I spend about 80,000 Girls get wet when I take them out to miss the child Ride through the block with the feather hat music loud I'm up all sky my feet dance in the cloud I take the party home private bring the whole crowd They try to block my shot man you call foul released in 2009 project x that album vanished really quickly and to be honest at that time i haven't even heard of it and it's really hard to find even a physical copy online of it i'm guessing the production is done by mark lives the beats sound kind of khm or claiborne family ish with the use of string arrangements on the keyboard or on the synth yeah but overall it's definitely not a good album if you look for group albums collaboration albums i would rather the go for KHM or Claiborne Family, well, or Analog Brothers, or you know. A really an odd one was the song Spotlight, where they flat out just used the whole instrumental from that knife song. Uh... I'm an icon, that means I fuck with the lights on. Paparazzi get taking up, pictures up, with their Nikon, celebrating 20 years in a game. 20 years with the fame, why you all spit the same? So I would say Project X, definitely only for Die Hard, not even Die Hard Cool Keith fans, maybe Die Hard Tim Dog fans or Mark Life fans. I'm not really digging it. The style of this album, this clubbish gangster rap style, is just not up my alley at all. Yeah, not really, not really my taste. Project X, I c And now we come to the strongest collaboration, the strongest, the best album, in my opinion, out of all these collaboration albums. It's Analog Brothers, Pimp to Eat, released in 2000. Keith Cole, mad vocalist, spitting from the key like San Antonio Spurs, George Gervin, girl start to wear me how I'm serving, through this comic books get pissed on, I'm not Jerry Lewis, Green Man, Calvin Murphy, point guard. So who are the Analog Brothers? Analog Brothers are... Of course, Cool Keith, aka Keith Cork, Ice T, aka Ice Oscillator, Pimp Rex, Silver Synth, and Mark Life again. This is my favorite album because I can listen to it from front to end. I don't have to skip any song. All the songs are really, really great. I love the whole tone of the album, the analog themed tone. Everything is synth. Everything has a kind of funk to it, maybe. It's very entertaining. It's easy to listen to. It's just, it's a lot of fun. And the first song I want to show you is the song So Bad, which is so good, so, so good. The whole song is very melodic and very smooth. It's just chilled. It has this very thick layered bass driven flow. And on top of that, it sprinkles like these nice little synth fragments, melodies. Do -do -do -do. And the hook is really great. It's very catchy. When I was a kid, my mom used to tell me, don't you be so bad, boy. Don't be so bad. Don't be so bad. Still the slickest slang struck with this famous frame, plus a Mac a million, chameleon. Identity switch, P. 
pitch. Never a glitch in gaming on them. Top models I'm gaining on them. Okay, and the other song I want to show you, I have to read from the cover. It's called Perms, Bald Hats, Afros, and Dreads. In my opinion, it's my favorite song of the whole album. It's such a great song. It has this, these weird sounds in it, like this bass thing. It sounds like a cat purring. And it has this kind of eerie, spooky, it's really subtle in the background. Chorus thing to it, like a little choir, or I don't know what it is. Smells like cherries up in this bitch. Like the fearless fly breaking these strawberries and all the cute shit. Get ready, wet set, blow dry, curl wrap, gleam shine. Perfect like that OG pimp style. Wow, child, since day one, perm since 71. Up on this shit, it comes. I said perms, all in Afros and dreads. And the other great song is called Country Girl. Very sounds kind of popish and it starts off with I don't know who's singing I, I want to say it's cool Keith maybe like singing really high Ooh, so fly. it's a really sunny sunshine smooth afternoon chilling out song or maybe cruising really slowly it has a nice vibe to it it's vibing down south in the nightclub with the finest woman kind of lovely cruising in the Buick Electra 225 white walls playing my eight track tape by earth wind and fire with a red bone driving up 95, chewing white castles. Don't give me no hassles. Look at the birds fly over the Grand Canyon, packing sandwiches for a romantic evening. Picnic time, picking flowers while she's taking a bath. Okay, and the least favorite of all collaboration albums is, <laughs> but in a funny way, The Undertakers. Okay, so if I have to choose, my favorite song would be Reverend Tom. It's actually not a bad song, but it's just really poppy. I'm gonna tell you guess who's the guest star with Howard Cosell? The rap game since Kobe Bryant wasn't even an embryo. Michael Jordan walked in. That's right, his little son was 13. I used to manage Marvin Hagelin, Ken Norton. Like the whole album sounds very, it sounds almost like a parody. It's, you can't really take it seriously. And the best song to show just how poppy it is, like the worst song on the album is Party in the Morgue. It's... Party in the Morgue. Come on, come on. Party in the Morgue, y'all. Yeah. Party in the Morgue. But I don't hate it. I'm, I appreciate it for what it is. It's a, it's a fun, silly album where you can pick like two or three songs and then you just move on to a different album. But I'm fucking glad it exists. More red beans in the back. Who cares? Who knows who's in the spotlight? I'd rather listen to Below coming through New Orleans with Project Pat. With Skull, Duggery, Hollow, Tip and Trey 8. New York should be loving me. Like all Cool Keith's albums. Strong, weak. They're all still interesting. They're all a part of the whole mosaic. Mosaic. Of the whole jigsaw puzzle that is... The artist, Cool Keith. So next up, I want to talk about a group of albums that is I usually never listen to. It's these four. Starting off with Dr. Octagon, The Return of Dr. Octagon, Official Space Tape, Cool Keith, Dr. Octagon Part 2, and Cool Keith, Collapse Tape. Cool Keith, Collapse Tape was released in 2006. It's exactly what it says it is. Single songs where he collabed rated on other people's albums. The only place for high prices and rates is hourly rate based on how nice he is. There's a lot of I'm ready you raps for lame ass guys out of nowhere corny asses I never heard of you cats. It's alright, I mean, but it's not, it's not a regular Cool Keith album. Next up, let's talk about Dr. Octagon Part 2. He uh, produced all the songs himself and I think released this by himself, but it is not a Dr. Octagon record at all. Everybody's leasing, they front end, car payments, they want it. Everybody's on the phone, they something. So what you say? What you doing? So what you say? It's just a collection of songs that he took from different albums that he released from Claybone Family to the White Label album with Nancy Des Rosier, different stuff so it's not it's not an album really it's just a collection not really even the best then we have to talk about the official space tape which in itself isn't anything special really it's just a collection of really good songs that he made mixed together by Junkers Lou <laughs> Oh, you're so 
Dr. Octagon, paramedic focus on the east for priests. My anesthetics prescribe a certain fertilizer. That's how DJ Junkus Lou said in an interview. He got Cool Keith's attention, he sent it to him, he liked it. That's how they started working together, bringing his production in remixes for the KHM album, as far as I know, Claiborne Family, I think as well, and later on producing entire albums for Cool Keith with Love and Danger and Tayshan Dorset. So that's why this is important in Cool Keith's career, but musically it's not adding anything to his catalog. But it's, 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 it's a nice mixtape. Although I'm not really keen on the actual audio quality, it's not the best audio quality. And finally, talking about this album, it's super overproduced. It's not a Cool Keith album. It's the so-called bootleg as far as I know. The label that released this album basically made a bunch of instrumentals themselves, totally overproduced, and just took his acapellas and kind of tried to make it fit the instrumental. It's industrial, real like my reels. You know the environmental change in its appeal. Information is more concealed. Inf information is more concealed. Trees are dying. Trees, 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 trees are dying. It doesn't do anything for me. It's You can listen to it and some beats are not even bad, but it's just so over the top and not cool Keith at all. They use him, they sample his acapella. He's basically like a sample accessory to the instrumentals. I don't even want to listen to it actually. Holy shit brother, let's talk about love and why. Have you heard of it? Because I only heard of it very recently. Which is sad because this is really fucking amazing. You have great production by Ray West. Love and Why is a collective of a couple of rappers. You have obviously Cool Keith, Rock Marciano, AG, OC, Curious, and Dave Dar, who I didn't know. And again, Ray West is pulling it off with a very coherent, atmospheric, dreamlike production on this album, as seems to be his signature. And I'm loving it about it. All the involved rappers seem to share the same energy, the same connectiveness. Cool Keith is featured on three tracks on this album and again he's pairing up with AG as he did already on his album Couple of Slices, also produced by Ray West and it's amazing. These two have such a great energy together and such a great vibe that just forces me to think we need a fucking solo album entitled Crooked Cups of AG and Cool Keith produced by Ray West and maybe co-produced by Cutmaster Kurt and it will be fucking amazing. So enough talking about it, let's listen to their song together. Here's Cool Keith and AG produced by Ray West, Extreme Status. I'm sporadic eclectic, they saving it all like Elizabeth. They not electric, what they put out, you messed up kid. You gotta cross me like the GW Bridge. I got everybody programmed, coming out your mom's womb with a fitted from Liz. Robots controlled by Gigantor. Scrape your knees, you're trying to tip in the basket. I got Neo Spore. The flow make your ears bleed. That's what the gods bad before. And since this is a cool Keith video, we're gonna listen to the cool Keith track on this album. The next one is called Pressure Up, where he teams up with Rock Marciano. Pressure up, pressure up. Can they measure up? I'm off the rim, bank shot, slim, spin off the bank, shit out the German tank. You fucking with a sweet shake, I'm on ginseng. Run on Oprah's couch like Tom Hanks. You back up the party about seven blocks. Eggnog White, the brother of Frank White. Serve you good speed. MC flake off, they style winning P. If you like independent rap, get your hands on Love and Why. It's a fucking great album. Cool Keith is only on three tracks, but the whole album is fantastic. Amazing production by Ray West, who is rapidly becoming one of my favorite hip hop producers. I'm fucking checking this dude out. So do the same. Check out Love and Why. Can he measure up? Okay, next category I want to talk about are self-produced albums by him. Similar to Matthew and Lost Masters and all that, but different category in my opinion are the albums The Commissioner 1 and Commissioner 2, Total Orgasm, White Label Mix Series Volume 1 with Nancy Des Rosier. Cool Keith and H-Bomb, Seventh Veil, Stoned. The one that I want to talk about now is, and it's special to me, it's Cool Keith's personal album. Cool Keith, baby. The From the Bronx, New York. Bronx. You know I miss you, right? I really care about you. Released in 2004, completely produced by himself. This is a great album. This is even one of my favorites. And you can see it's signed. And I think it was published in 500 copies, if I'm not wrong. 
So this album is super special to me. Also because musically, I really, really like the whole production of this. Come out your cheap ass pockets when I lay my skills. CD duplicators, underground masturbators, new fans activate. Piss on the haters. Yeah, I do what I want to. It's a very special album. It's a personal album. And I really like the beats on this one, even though the beats are kind of cheap or not as banging or I don't even know how to say it but they all are very in tune with each other they're just really easy to listen to and very entertaining your dating game is weak looking for Mr. Right Mr. See-through Mr. Light Huzzy you don't know everything your mind stuck on some big wedding White House and white picket fence can't enjoy a simple walk at the mall woman you on defense the personal album is an album that I would put on if I would be in the mood for let's say some old Sade but I want to listen to someone rapping <laughs> and I would put this on it's a subtle album it's not annoying it doesn't need your attention just to have playing in the background to set a mood for your room maybe or wherever you're listening to it has a very ambient flavor to it I like all these songs man so Baby, you look good under the tripod. Directors, we work hard, edit your film. Every angle like elegant angel, great shot. Hold your pose, honey, be professional. Watch your earrings dangle for the camera, hold it right there. You got the answer. As Tina Turner would say, tonight you're my private dancer. Let's get weird for a second and let's talk about the commissioner one, whoops, one and two. Two of his weakest, sh shittiest, worst albums. Uh, what's going on here? What has happened? What is the deal with this? The rap game has changed. You got four different types of promoters. The luxury promoter, the hustler promoter, and the alternative promoter. Of course, the roach promoter. Produced everything by himself. Number one producer, Keith Thornton. He only released in this shape and form. So not even real cover CD, nothing. Like few copies only of this. Same with this one, bit more professional. Here it says 1,100 copies available only. So I got it. These albums are weird, like here, most of the raps, he has slowed down his rapping voice, so it sounds like what you are. I told you before when Trevor and Harry turned they ass on me. I fed the boys big steaks. Your van ate the best of beef. Toothpicks plucking dog shit out their teeth. In all fairness, you gotta keep it real. Both. I pretty much you can't really listen to them like I I don't think I, I think once I went through this full album nothing stuck apart from this voice that is so slowed down it's so hard to listen to please if anyone has ever listened through both of them and there's like one peak song that I really have to listen to tell me because usually if I'm in the mood for cool Keith which is very often I'm in the mood for different shit I'm not in the mood for these ones but if I'm missing out, let me know. And to conclude with a section of his self-produced kind of um, different category of albums, Total Orgasm. I'm too much about my swear. Yes, I'm too much about my swear. Yes, Allow me to reinvent myself. Sit back and take my balls off the shelf. Spalding for the swag. Watch me enjoy my health. Those are mixtapes that he released rather recently, I want to say. Uh, here it says 2015. Uh, he might have started 2013 or 14, maybe. I'm not really sure. But he started getting into producing his own beats like super frequently. Song after song after song. I think he's producing those songs like daily. So we have three mixtapes here. Overall now it's five already. And each each have like 20 songs on them so it's it's a high 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 output and therefore low 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 quality jealous ass niggas beat him up all night next door you hear that dumb bitch crying oh reggie he beat me up with the ash around her ass she looked like a mountain lion waiting for the city to call her she got no house appliances the songs are kind of hard to listen to but there are a few exceptions that are kind of cool like slam dunk sitting on top of the rap like a toilet bowl waiting to get it on your girl gave me her underwear to write my lyrics on i'm doing shows producing neil's next album and big sean baseline for three hundred an hour i'm in the studio so much i built the boo shower seven veil motherfucker 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 fans believe life's so real I'll buck 50 a face like seal is little Kim fake do a Robert Blake legal 
scrapes take a lot of niggas to cake. All right, now Seven Veil is a weird one. I don't even know really what it is. Like it's H Bomb, aka Jackie Jasper, with Cool Key. So they both have this album together, but not really. And when I first listened to it, I was like, "Jeez, what, what's go what's going on here? What is the Jackie Jasper just make his own album and he features Cool Keith a little bit? So it's not really it's not really clear what's going on here. It's produced by Chilly Chill. Don't know who that is. So at first listen, I really fucking I didn't like this album at all. I rated it at like. Four Four out of ten. But then, lo and behold, I listened to it again after drinking a lot of green tea. Listening to Seven Veil vale while drinking a lot of green tea is pretty fucking amazing. At least the second half of this. The second half of Seven Veil vale is really fucking fun if you can get down with this player shit. This is a groovy player album. It's really fun. So if you're in a mood for that, if you can't get down, can you get down with it? If you can't get down with it, then this is really good. Don't get me wrong, it's still very generic. It's this low rider kind of west coast or south i don't know no west coast i guess player style but the second half is really fun there you have songs like what you gonna do with snoop dogg Rap, spark, start, record start, street smarts, put caps in body parts. one little two little three little jeans hanging while banging and slinging in keys so the idea of a full-length feature album of Jackie Jasper and Cool Keith is amazing because I'll, I, th I always thought both of them together have great chemistry, great energy, and Jackie Jasper just has this really cool raspy voice and a style of rap I just really like. But on this album, if he's just by himself with these kind of West Coast player beats, I'm out. I'm not digging it. But on the second half, when the beats get a bit better, I guess, or even more funky, and Cool Keith steps in with, with him, and we get more features, it gets better. Yo, the song Pop Star is just really fucking, it's pop rap, but it's so much fun. I pay producers $300,000 to the Neptunes for one tune. I haven't recouped yet. I'm still on the street. A lot of tour buses follow me. Overnight girls in stadium see me on TRL, wanna swallow me. My records play on the radio every day. MTV Crib. Fake the way I live. My favorite song from that album would definitely be Prince of New York. Almost a pop song. The sample is really poppy and kind of flashy. Check it out. It's a great song. Puts you in a great mood. It's really fucking chill. Woohoo! My name written on the back of your hip huggers. Gotta handle the flashes. Adjust my speed shutter. Futuristic vocalist. Cool Keith. I'm pro at this. I'm too high up in the sky, many are low at this Girls look out the colossal windows it's on when the wind blows. So yeah, if you're in the mood for something chill, maybe a little bit player, hustler, big pimpin LA lowrider vibe, west coast, chilly de willy de fucker Rudy. Check out Seventh Veiled Stoned, but I also get if people fucking don't like it at all. And the reason why I put this in the category of street album is just because, dude, man, it was so fucking hard to finally get this album. Like, I'm a lifetime Cool Keith fan, and only like recently I got this. It has been released properly on the label, but also, I don't think anyone really noticed it, and just the quality of the, the whole album and the impact, no one really cares about this album at all. I think it's a lot of fun, but yeah, that's why I put it in street albums. Scroll through your bank accounts. I'm not a pimp. You want to give me your pocketbook. I'm not a violating guy. I'm not a pocket crook. Yo, next let's talk about... I don't know. I don't know the name of the album. It's the album with Sam Medina. I don't know when it's dropped. It was some sort of a street album. There's no CD release, no vinyl release. You can barely find it online. I must have downloaded it like a couple of years ago. Luckily, I still have it. I wasn't even able to find it right now. I have no information on this album, but let's check it out. Coming out 95 in a state. 95 in a state. I'm a robot walking around. With the red laser on the Mac Millie, Millie. Making sure nobody acts silly On Market Street Shopping and wanna make his world Buy a seat through Leotards For all the sixes girls Billy Cunningham and Julia Serving in the suburban Confession time I have no idea who Sam Medina is I only know him from this project He sounds alright The beats sound kinda like KHM style See how bomb it gon' whack people Gloria Stefan loves me Buy my tickets before I shit on you Sign autographs for ugly seal Walk over to black people You gotta know how to act so maybe Mark Life was somehow involved in the production, I don't know, but check out Pure Penicillin, but check out Pure Penicillin, fucking word, Penicillin, but check out Pure Penicillin, definitely sounds like KHM. Back you lose Jack, go on, the one that's wrong, get long and get strong, stretch and fetch, the rats, place your back, yo, beer, batter, jawbone cavities, pure penicillin rap villain, yo, beer, batter, jawbone cavities, pure penicillin. 
killing rap villains. And another song I wanna highlight, which is pretty good and pretty groovy, is called VIP. Check it out. I move out the front foot, attack my target. Ladies and saw it so smooth, hand the bond of the clue, that's the clock in. Where's the bomb and legs and knees been? Bumping the two, you DJs Q you. Apollo step back, what's up with the boo you? The Captain Morgan, ice cup in the blue too. Spanish girls dance, this is a tight pants. Watch me count grants, y'all can change plans. It's definitely not the best album or EP because it only has eight or nine tracks, but it's definitely an interesting side project and I would love to find out more about it. Like who the fuck is Sam Medina? Who produced it? How did this come about? What is it? Yeah, definitely an interesting little gem to find. Is it good? Not really. Is it bad? Not really. Just check it out for yourself. Cool Keith and Sam Medina. And this EP with Sam Medina is just proof there is so much music to discover when it comes to Cool Keith. It just keeps, it's a gift that keeps on giving. It's the Keith that keeps on giving. It's the gift that keeps on keeping. When you Google Cool Keith, you will also find this album, which is called Randolph Liftoff featuring Cool Keith down on land. It has a really funny shitty cover. First I thought he's a deer with deer horn because it looked like the scene in Hot Shots. Often people say you look familiar if you're not hip, no trip. This is the talent that you're looking for. I can admit, one minute I'm here, where a second later, right above your MC's eyebrow. Cool Keith is only on two songs of this, but it seems like he was, Randolph Liftoff is like a protege of Cool Keith or something, so he's kind of, I think, try to give him a name and boost him. Black, you see my activator? Chicago hustler ordering three drinks out the Godfather. Dressed like the intruder's impressions, you can't stop my stylistic confessions. Randolph Liftoff is not a bad rapper, and the beats also not bad, some are really good actually, but overall it's kind of bland and forgettable and generic and not really anything, I don't know. Randolph Liftoff, yeah, don't don't really know what to say to this. <laughs> it's not shit, it's not horrible, but it's also nothing you really need. The next album I have the pleasure talking about is the wide label mixed series volume one album with Nancy Desrosier. Y'all can bring your best car, uh -huh. and bring your best star. Yeah. And add on your guest stars. My lyrics tear another asshole through New York. Uh -huh. Your fiance's anus burn you like jalapeno. Dude, I fucking love this album. This album is not really a good album. It has really good songs and it has really bad songs. But I like the overall. I like every song, dude. Released in 2004 on Gamelock Records. This album is produced by a guy named Phantom Man or XXX. Beats wise, this album is a hit and a miss. There's a couple of beats that are really good just instrumental wise, really nice beats. And then you have really shitty beats that are so fucking annoying and like kind of electro pop dance-ish, Jesus Christ. But why I love this album so much is Cool Keith and Nancy Desrosier's energy together. I love how they feed off each other's energy. It's really dynamic. I love how powerful Cool Keith sounds on this one. He sounds really engaged and very dynamic in his raps. And Nancy Desrosier by far is not a good rapper, but she has so much character and she brings so much positive energy to the table and charisma that this album to me is a win. Master yourself, take that test drive, see your way out that negative path, dark pattern, unfair weak voices in your head, life is full of pleasure, take your measure, forget about the weather, better days are straight ahead. Unfortunately, Nancy Desrosier has passed away as I picked up online on it uh, like a year ago or two years ago, which is pretty fucking sad. I wish there would have been a second volume of this because this is a really great album that I to this day enjoy. Every summer I put it on, it puts me in a really good mood and I want to show you a few songs. Let's start off with Shorty. Sword clothes in the hampers warned everybody including your hype men. Global maximum urine piss on the core of the city. Leave a New York police department with pants. With KL's chicken, baby. My uncle's Colonel Sanders. Watch the mixtape, niggas don't even know yet. Pressing up homosexuals that ain't even pro yet. This album is a really mixed album, but in a good sense. You have party songs, you have chilled songs, you have fun songs. It's sleazy, it's kind of trashy. It just puts me in a really fucking good mood. If I were to just play one song from this album, it's 100%, most definitely, the song named Sugar. I love that beat, I love the piano sample and how cool Keith raps. It's it's an amazing song. Check out Sugar. Nancy should sing, nothing's happy. There's too many animated find the Nemo monkeys swimming like color fish in the street. Singers to me are like Halloween kids with soft candy rap. Trick or treat, 
Backyard big studios with pit bulls walking around drinking hypnotic making little girl beats. Nancy does Rosie and Cool Keith were an item where a couple as far as I know. He also wrote a song for her on the Diesel Truckers album called I Love You Nancy. So yeah, this is a very, this is a unique thing and I'm glad they did it and I'm glad I have it and I'm glad I can share it with you and I'm glad you can listen to it too. Just to give you an example of what you can expect from this album, I also want to show you a song called Hey Mommy where you find that type of beat that I talked about earlier, kind of electro, poppy, annoying. But I find Nancy does Rosie with her charisma. She She's just always bringing something to the table that makes this song listenable. It's just a fucking fun ride. So check out Hey Mommy. I'm getting a bite to eat. Gonna take a quick nap. Then I'll be ready at eight. I'll check you later. Hey, Poppy. Where you going, Poppy? Hey, Mommy. Where you going, Mommy? Je veux sortir ce soir. Vamos a bailar. Je veux sortir ce soir. Vamos a bailar. All right, let's talk about a weird one. It's called The Doctor Is In. The Fritz Scandy, I guess the Navy got him happy, swilling like Pappy, girl, they voice raspy. It's a swagger like Jagger, nasty, I'm constantly on him with 8x11, step on him. Weird fucking street album, never released on CD, let alone vinyl, only released on MP3 online. And what can I say about this album? It's fucking out there. It's kind of similar to the Commissioner albums, as it uses a weird voice alteration thingy. So again, Cool Keith changes his voice with some sort of technical device, but different to the Commissioner album, I find on The Doctor Is In, you can actually listen to it and it sounds not always bad. Let's put it that way. Silky Sammy, I'm lyrically wearing the supersonic jeans, the flares, the step. <laughs> There's even a few songs that I kind of I really like actually. They are trashy, but I like them. They want the confident by the dozen strung out competitors who roll with editors on drugs. I call them indoor thugs on Dora Explorer rugs. Back to the basics, back to the basics, back to the basics. And I know if you just like regular rap music, this is probably not your thing at all and I get it. It's so nerdy. I just envision him sitting there on a computer and coming up with these weird melodies and weird sounds like late at night and just working away and every night a different beat. Self-released in 2011, The Doctor Is In is a weird ass album. I doubt you can even listen through in one sitting. It's It gets on your nerves, it's, it's repetitive, it's monotonous. But dude man, I still like it. I like the style of it. I will listen to three or four tracks, then I'm fine. <laughs> Don't have to listen to more, but um, I like it. And he has some nice melodies with these weird, I don't even know what he uses, but yeah. Check it out, The Doctor is in. Definitely not for everyone, probably not for anyone, except this old fella. Give it a try, check it out. It's probably not for you. Back to the basics, back to the basics. Back to the basics. And next, I want a bunch four records together. All these four records are produced by Cool Keith himself. And we are talking about Spankmaster, released in 2001. We got Matthew, 2000. Got Lost Masters, one and two. Lost Masters, three. The specialty about these records is they're not really, really good, but they are also definitely not bad. Let's start with the strongest, in my opinion. I would say it's Matthew. Smack the shit out of you for doing that whack ass shit you do. 50 bodyguards around you, keep him in that fuck you in the ass around you. Standing like you running shit, you ain't the fucking president. His most aggressive one, as people say, because he was like fucked up with the industry and people trying to fuck him over and whatnot. So he put out this record by himself. He sounds very angry, which is good. He has a very driven rhyme style on this record. He sounds very aggressive and really high-pitched. I like it. Best songs from that record, I would say, that, oh, for my taste, definitely Operation Extortion. Fuck you, nigga, criticizing my shit, talking behind my back. You so weak, nigga, don't speak, nigga. Face the trigger, what you know about my shit? Why you reviewing it? Why you rating it? You fucking hating it. Backpack ass, nigga, how you figure? I love the beat. Extravagant Traveler, that's good too. Looking at the Rob Report, 80,062 Bentley. Own up the Houston Astrodome, Don King represent me. Prevost bus with gold trimming, you can't act up front on your lemon. Legend status with keys to the MGM. I don't believe you, that's just funny. He basically just keeps repeating stuff in punchline after punchline. It's not much of a rhyme, but it's definitely entertaining. You got mad guns, I don't believe you. 
You got 11 cars, I don't believe you. You got the block scared, I don't believe you. Use a bug thug, I don't believe you. I actually really like this and I like the artwork here too. It's so basic. Next one I want to talk about is Spunkmaster. Yeah. Spankmaster with the hilarious artwork. I like this one. It's a bit, it's not as consistent, I want to say. Like, there's some weird beats going on there, but that's a given. That's just how it is with Cool Keith. If he produces himself, he will have cool beats. He will have, all right, I get it, it's Cool Keith beats. And he has like some wacko shit, man. But the wacko shit isn't really on this one, I would say. That's more in different records that I will approach later or have already. Who knows how this is edited. Favorites would be Drugs, number five. It's a weird one. It's a bit, it's kind of depressing actually. It's a really raw track about how he hypothetically smokes crack with all these legendary people. Tie my arm up at night between shows, taking soda tops off of soda pops. I used to be up all night in the living room, smoking a lot of weed with the four tops. Making collect calls back home to my pops. My little brother said, he to stop. Mac Trucks I like, which is basically like the preview to the upcoming Diesel Truckers a couple of years later. Wherever you search, there's no one greater. But you look at the back of the club, walking around, I see you, that's you, a hater. Max Trucks, big wheels, roll. Jewelry Shine I like, even though it's super poppy, super corny with the chorus, but it has a good vibe to it. Perhaps you come and get on, seriously spit on, flow on, double tracks and go on, switch up the beat, practice, tactics, girls before me, throw the boots, hit the mattress, nigga, you back. But my favorites, if someone would say what's the best track from this record, probably people wouldn't agree. Anyways, long story short, my two favorite tracks are Black Eula, which is just, I don't know man, it's just cracking me up, this it's, it's, it's mental, but it's good, I love it. Bust a rhyme, kid, bust that. Nigga, fuck that. We on the move and the girls and they love that. My shit is on tight, flowing with the gun right. Computer level, where you going? What you saying, brother? The other song would be, where is it? Well, I like that too. Girls, would you fuck tonight? I'ma tell you. Third track on the record. I'ma tell you how I feel. Meh, 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 meh. I'ma tell you how I feel. I'ma tell you how I feel. Take you out simple, add a dim effect to your spotlight. You think you hot, right? Surrounding tables got you kissing your bodyguards, holding Chris. It doesn't get better than that. I love that shit. I don't know why. Okay, and then the last two are The Lost Masters, Volume 1 and 2. With number two, I'm actually not really that familiar, to be honest. Uh, that's a record I will have to give way more listen to. I uh, this time. Everybody adjust your watch and clock this time. Girl with the big ass. She's on the jock this time. I'm pretty sure I listen to it like once or twice, but it's just nothing really pops out. Whereas I like this one, also the artwork. Look at this shirt. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. That's really good. It's, yeah, again, produced by himself, released in 2003. All these productions are like kind of low budget, but it works in favor of it. I love it. I would say favorite songs would be Robert Perry. Robert Perry, that. I like that beat and the drum, it just sounds really, really raw. You know about the Robert Perry, Robert Perry, aka the double K. Man, get off my back, y'all sound whack like the brown sugar soundtrack. Freaks. Freaks get naked, baby. Freaks get naked, baby. New York City and shit expands. New York City, we pissing it, we living it, we die, we all take shit. There's a million albums out there with that opera and Shakespeare shit. I stuff my ears with cotton when you rap. I think those four four songs are like the strongest ones. That's right. Cool key. Yeah. Yo, I blow them girls back like power jets off my dick. You think you quick Vic, then come display your wacky shit. So if we talk about the Lost Masters, we also have to talk about the Lost Masters 3 which only came out on this compilation where they have Lost Masters 1 and 2 and 3 in this CD case. Didn't get a vinyl release, it didn't get a separate release as far as I know. Probably for good reason, as we will find out now. I'm making calls, taking a pee on TV, all I see is back-to-back -back replicas of Biggie Smalls. Similar silhouettes with added graphic effects. I'm tired of amateur black television. I'd rather see a foreign dude rap or a Mexican. Released in 2009, Lost Masters 3 really is 
not good. It's not good. It's very monotonous. It's super minimalistic. And all these sounds that he uses or melodies, if you want to call it that, it's really, it gets on your nerves, man. It's hard to listen to. Nonetheless, I do, as you know by now, I like his trashy style. So let's check out I'm Computer because it's fucking fun. I am computer. I am computer. I am computer. I am computer. I'm race car driven, heavy pissing, impossible with my mission. Watch women cook, take a thong off, shit in the kitchen. On Lost Masters 3, you get 16 tracks just in that style. Minimalistic, very monotonous, very uninspired. But at the same time, man, what do you want? The world stole instructions, duplicating Ron Kane. I'm what Nirvana is, the pain of Kurt Cobain. I'm the original Racer X, not the Alfred Hitchcock silhouette. The man who gave a style to Frank Sinatra and showed the architect papers to Bruce Wayne. Definitely the weakest one out of the Lost Masters. Lost Masters 1 is the strongest one. The other two don't really care too much for it. Don't know why. Don't know what's really different because Lost Masters 1 is also very monotonous. But I think the sounds that he used there are just a bit more catchy or just more what my music taste is. And whereas on Lost Masters 1 you really find some bad bangers on Lost Masters 2 and 3 and especially 3 there is no bangers all the songs are really repetitive and monotonous it's not good it's really not good okay now it's getting serious we come to the category which I like to call the beasts Those are the albums of Cole Keith, critically acclaimed, beloved by the fans, the strongest albums, the biggest albums, the most important albums. I have them right here and here. So let's start off. Ultra with Tim Dog, Big Time, Dr. Octagon, A Much Better Tomorrow with Dandy Automator, Black Elvis, Lost in Space, Cool Keith Sextile, The Unreleased Archive with Cutmaster Kurt, Sextile, Masters of Illusion, Doctor Doom 2, Moosebumps, an exploration of modern day horror, blah blah, the SP1200 remixes, the Cenobites, and finally we have Your Mom is My Wife with Cutmaster Kurt. Okay, so let's talk about Ultra, aka Cool Keith, teaming up with Tim Dog, releasing Big Time in 1996. As I strike in your area, shut down, close your shops, your crew got high blood pressure, it's still by the four chops. Your style is greasy, so what your hair is nappy peasy. I wet your brain and tie your penis to the two train. Drag you down the tracks, spray paint like artifacts. Produced by Cutmaster Kurt. This album very much sounds like Sex Style. The beats are very much alike to Sex Style. One of my favorite songs is Industry is Whack. Gotta be true. You wanna be the next when you should have been you. Then tell me what the fuck am I supposed to do? Be at you. All I wanna do is rap. Get some trap and live life kinda fat. And that's that. But how could a man just rap? When the whole fucking industry is whack! So just like on Sex Style you have these very bass driven melodies, very bass driven tracks with little synth sprinkles on top. Next song I want to show you is the song Keep It Real. I rub my thing on your neck and gain more respect than worms you drop. Next time you get your ass checked. I check stews and throw doo doo back on your fools. Nobody can rap your albums whack. Rhino monkey crap. Giraffe pee pee. You couldn't give away a CD with female singers collaborating at and BD. The difference between the, the CD and the LP is that on the CD you have little you have an intro you have skits between the songs so it's a bit longer than the LP version funny to note is on the back you can see already Keith playing around with alter egos here he's as Reverend Tom as he will appear later on the Undertakers here he calls himself Willie Biggs no face which is the last track on the LP as well mr. green and we have Tim Dog, aka calling himself South Bronx Slayer. It's a funny album, it's really good, I like it very much. I only kind of recently started listening to it because I always figured it looked very old school-ish. Old school type of music is not really, it's just not where I'm at. But it's not, it's, it's like sex style. Most people would probably call it old school, for me old school is more like when it sounds 80s-ish. You know, with these A-B-A-B -A -B rhymes. So yeah, definitely recommend. Ultra, big time. It's very, very good. Big time, snakes down, diamonds on my wrist. Mm. Sipping John B in the limousine. Big time, snake fit, so we getting chips. Yeah. Making mad moves with the gangster lead. And the next heavyweight I want to talk about is Sex Style. Sex Style, 
niggas want it free, they dogs drink my piss. First of all, it was called Erotic Man, but it turned out to be Sex Style, where Cool Keith teams up with Cutmaster Kurt as the producer, and Cutmaster Kurt delivers awesome beats, very bass heavy beats, very bouncy, sleazy beats. It's a great album. The first song I want to show you guys is Sex Style. You want freestyle? That's right, the style is free. Niggas suck my dick and they girls drink my pee. I'm on some mess in them shit you can't get with Pull your panties down on stage and watch you sweat quick Released the 1996 Sex Style is one of his masterpieces It's one of the big heavyweights that he released for his porno style type of rap The only song that I really actually don't like And it's kind of a shame that it's so far in the beginning of the album It's just my personal taste, I, I just, I don't dig it at all Make up your mind, I just don't like that beat at all It sounds, it's, nah, I don't dig it but, I wanna show you another song which I really really like, it's called Keep It Real, Represent. I wanna stand back and bust nuts at your butts, your girl is cocked up with lollipops doggy style. I feel I'm dealing with plastic, watch these fake smiles, yeah, meet my left and my right. Keep it real, represent what? My nuts! Sex star is heavily influenced by like this Californian late back LA porn, prostitute, pimp, a little side note, Cutmaster Kurt said when they were producing Sex Style, Cool Keith like spent literally hours and hours in porn shops just looking at porn magazines and porn tapes. And Cutmaster Kurt was like, dude, come on, let's go, let's record. Cool Keith said, no man, that's my that's my inspiration. Cutmaster Kurt said, Sex Style is probably the closest you can get to Cool Keith's like real personality. So the porn style, the sex style, that's that's what Cool Keith is most about. It's his most authentic self. Just look at the cover. Bringing Max and Gil, the public think I'm very ill. Like Jimmy C, posing naked for the FCC. I'm not no basketball star, your girl watch me pee. Hock me like cops every time my sperm drops. She's in my face with thongs, chewing lollipops. And Cool Keith is a passionate photographer. He takes photos of uh, chicas. You can see it in multiple music videos where he just grabs his camera and has ladies posing for him. So he's big into that. Yeah, it's just a fun record. It's really good to listen to. Check out Lovely Lady. Rock your boots and leave my style written on your cooch We rub with the man's condoms in your soft hands I got plans for booty work to catch a lap dance That skirt is working and by myself I be jerking On to the chorus I want that purple cat like with the lime green red And of course if you talk about sex style you have to talk about the release from 2007 sex style unreleased archives and it says on the cover it's recordings from 1994 to 1995 these are all the tracks that didn't make the final cut on sex style which is insane because you have 17 8 tracks like all these tracks no b-sides on this one this is a crazy good album it's fantastic first song i want to show you is i could show you any any song basically it's it's it doesn't really matter which song i show you i'm just going to pick randomly this one, Rubber Love. Yeah, I love that one. So let's check out Rubber Love. I rub the drive and ooh, with your girlfriend. Your man is ugly, the kid look like gentle Ben. Don't get hyped cause your style, man, ain't my type. You better step off, I see it in your eye. Don't get jealous, your heart pumps Rubber Love. So yeah, for sure, if you like the Bay Area warm type of sound uh, of sex style, 100% recommendation, get the unreleased archive. And also get the CD because there's this booklet in there and it has some, first of all it has some great photos <laughs> and it has some very nice background info to each and every song, how it, how it was produced. It's a really great release to get this booklet as well. It's not included in the vinyl unfortunately. Next song, we're gonna choose randomly this one, Time for Business. Let's check it out. I know my game. I'm mad freaky undercover. Exotic psycho and California panty lover. I see the news and blood dripping from my shoes. He messed up money, Jack. I'm not the one to pay his dues. It's time for business. Hey, yo, your man got to step back. Really glad they released all these tracks. Fantastic album. Now we listen to Remember Me. You got nothing right now. Trying to milk a cow. Six fools in the house. How you like me now? Getting served in bed. Dessert sold the head. Three time winner. Naked star. I'm a thoroughbred. Remember me? No, I don't. Where I know you from? Remember no, I don't. Where I know you from? Next, I want to look at Your Mom Is My Wife, released in 2016, so not, not that long ago. These songs, it's six songs, it's an EP collection from 1996 to 1997. So, unreleased tracks with Cool Keith, produced by Cutmaster Kurt. Great tracks, 
I want to show you Black Sheriff. Country folks, my penis grow, swing like Michael Dokes. X-ray vision, foreskin, taste my circumcision. Y'all know I don't play, I wet the ukulele. I jam like Teddy and cracks, you bound to catch a wedgie. Open your back up, let styles penetrate up in you. You won't rap for long with anal burns, can't continue. And if you want to say sex that was West Coast style, this sounds like New York City, it's darker. I don't really know how to compare it with. I wouldn't really be able to put it on any other album. It doesn't really sound like Dr. Doom. It definitely doesn't sound like sex style. It doesn't sound like Masters of Illusion. So it's pretty much, I can see why those songs weren't really on any other album. Overweight lovers with blubber, never wear no rubber. Stay not real kid, they fake with no sex appeal. Hollywood monkeys, California, New York junkies, groupies are always on the guest list, they act like flunkies. So it's really great to have them on this separate EP, six tracks. And I really hope if Cut Must Occurred, if he has any more tracks with Cool Keith, from that era or from whenever it basically release it I'll buy it I'll buy all that stuff so definitely recommend if you want to get six extra bonus tracks get this EP okay the next album out of those beasts out of the heavyweight contender category is Masters of Illusion Released in 2000, produced by Cutmaster Kurt again. It features Motion Man and Cool Keith. Kind of drastic, popping shit, you get your ass kicked. Your style is homo, so what you made a sissy promo. Cut these old lyrics, blast off and blow your anal spirits. You hear it, fear it. Go far, I try to walk them near it. I have a problem with this album, and my problem is that I don't really know what my problem is. I'm not, I, I just don't find myself listening to it at all. There's two tracks on this album which I really, really like, but this album has 18 tracks. A couple of skits and it's just not enough to warrant me listening to the whole album I was trying to find out what my problem with this album is I, I'm not really sure it's just I think the beats of Cutmaster Kurt and on that one are for my taste it just doesn't strike the nerve it's just I don't know what it is exactly but the way the samples are looped or maybe I'm not really digging the samples or it's the way the samples are really short. Doom, do doom, do doom. Boy, Michael Edward Urban scissor hand cut. My own thought scamper. Hurts turtle, slice of this apple. I'm on some Tyson Rage bike. Bill Clinton get high and stick up. I run the United States, burnt nut. Guaranteed to get some. I might be sleeping on this. Maybe in a couple of years, I'll have listened to it way more often. And it's just this type of album that will grow on me. But I feel like the style of this album is kind of dated. Like it sounds like an album from exactly 2000 or maybe 2000 to 2003. The way he plays around with the samples, it's just not as timeless as the other productions. That might be the reason that it just sounds a bit dated to me. But nonetheless, I want to show you two songs of this album, which I really, really like. It's none of the, it's none of the tracks that comes at first. It's actually the very last track. Let me talk to you, followed by a hidden bonus track in the same right after called Black Suits, White Linen, White Linen, Black Suits. Super smooth tracks like those two. If the whole album would have been in, in, in that style, Jesus, that would have been a banger. So maybe something to think about if Cutmaster Cat Kurt can pull that off. I mean, obviously you would have to find a shitload of samples in that style, but those two tracks, ooh. Really good. Okay, so the first we listen to, let me talk to you. I'm not babyface, Jimmy Jam or the Lewis. When I look at you, the sex man wanna do this. Taste you up and down, bite the honey brown. Get your hair done so we can go have fun. Pull the grill out and everybody chill out. Gotta play a little Prince, Marvin Gaye. Sexual it's just this Bay Area vibe, smooth, chill vibe of the song that is just really catching me. So next track is just the same, same vibe. Black suits, white linen, check it out. Y'all can pay me no mind just like you do the AIDS virus. Silk suits is here with black linen. Turtlenecks, reflex, and make me cash checks. Hard shoes with pictures in the daily news. The Reverend Tom, the church know I dropped the bomb. Caught the Holy Ghost. No drug overdose. So yeah, that was Masses of Illusion and I know it's critically acclaimed. It's beloved by the fans. Usually I'd, I'd say people that are maybe not even digging Cool Keith that much, but they like that album. Motion Man is always great. I like his style of rapping. I like his kind of high-pitched nasally tone. It's a great team. So on, on paper, this record should blow my mind. But I, yeah, maybe I just have to give it more 
of a chance to really grow on me. Okay, and now let's talk about an album released in 1999. And I remember I started listening to rap music around 1996, maybe 1997. So when this album was released in 1999, it was hitting the rap scene pretty hard, actually. It's Black Elvis, Lost in Space. Flash bulletin, keep still solo with no manager. Time clock out, studios need the block out. Here's my number, call me direct. Get no feedback, no interviews. Channel 4, see me on the news. The song that was hitting so hard was Livin' Astro, which is also the best song actually from the album. But he gained quite some mainstream success with this album. It's actually not that bad considering that he produced those tracks mainly himself. I don't know, I'm not really listening to this album a lot. I remember when it came out, no, when I bought it, uh, let's say I bought it in I think 2000, 2001. I had like two days where I was listening to this non stop all the time I don't know I don't know what it was I was kind of drawn to it because the sound was very unusual to what I was used to at that time because mainly my taste was dominated by whatever mainstream rap was released on television like MTV and stuff like that or underground stuff released on raucous records this was the album that kind of that introduced me to cool Keith and got me intrigued with his character like what what he is all about musically I want to skip living at Astro because I am pretty Pretty sure everybody knows that song plus I don't want to get a strike on YouTube because of that so let's listen to another great song my second favorite maxi cult I got skill you on my tip now back off slack off let me do this and y'all turn the whack off the radio stereo here we go floor and blow Puerto Rico south to Latin your feet back the album is sci-fi themed as you can see from the cover and the title lost in space but also with the black Elvis theme although the Elvis doesn't really come through at all, I find. It's much more P-Funk, is it called? Where he uses this weird thing, fuck, I should look it up, where you manipulate the sound of your voice. It's it's not auto-tune, it's something they used before, like this little pipe in the mouth. So he uses that a lot, which can be a little bit annoying. Overall, it's not a bad album, but it's definitely not as great as you would think just by looking at this awesome cover art. This one represents it actually very well, I find. the With the guitar, no, with the bass, kind of 70s P-Funk era with a little bit of sci-fi mixed in. So yeah, that's, that's more appropriate. Another song we can listen to would be Keith Turbo. Two and a half units available bass you can't trace. Your girl staring in my face at 7,000 feet. Turbo jets in the cockpit you flock with. We kids on the block with. For protection, I'll ruin your whole section. So yeah, I don't, I don't really know what my issue is with this album because I don't think I have an issue. The only thing I can think of is that the beats produce in a very mainstreamish kind of way. It sounds too polished, maybe. It's, uh, it just doesn't really go together that well. There's a disconnect between what the song tries to be and then there's a, uh, and what, how it is mastered. It's mastered too, too well, I think. It's too, yeah, too polished. It should be a bit more rougher around the edges and then I think it would be the perfect album for me. Black Elvis and definitely very important in his discography. Although I wouldn't be surprised if mainstream rap fans bought this album and like totally didn't like it at all. Because Livin' Astro was the main song that was released from this album and it's not really representative of, of the rest of the album. Livin' Astro is really strong, really straightforward and the rest is typical Cool Keith style. Although I dig this album but I kind of feel like I dig it most for the cover art and for Livin' Astro and the songs I mentioned. Um, yeah, all right. So yeah, that's Black Elvis. Check it out though. Okay, the next album I want to present is basically re-released. It was first released as an EP in 1996 and then re-released in 2000 with a few extra songs added to it. First it was called A Better Tomorrow and now it's called A Much Better Tomorrow. It's produced by Dan the Automator, super important producer for Cool Keith. They actually didn't work that often together, as far as I know, only three times. On this one, Dr. Octagon, and on the new Dr. Octagon. Dan the Automator creates awesome beats, perfect for Cool Keith to flow on, as you can hear on this album. There's also a few instrumentals. It's just a really great listen. It's a very kind of dark, atmospheric album. It sounds really organic, like everything sounds like it's just been sampled. Great samples, great melody, very melodic, very playful. Cool Keith calls himself Sinister 6000 on this one. It's definitely one of my favorites. Now I want to show you the song. It's over now. Flying nighttime, 
eating peanuts on the plane with no money control. My stress builds on my brain. My ticket's one way, I'm out the Southern Cali way. I left behind some people that wasn't even equal. I thought back with chicks and freaks in 86 when Marley was in control. The funky magic mix. Stan the Automator, he produced the Gorillas, he produced Deltron 3030. He's a very strong figure in, in rap music, but I think in Cool Keith's career he was very important. He is still important because they just dropped this album. But I think the collaboration between the two of them is not always easy because I think Cool Keith is a very specific character and so is Dan the Automator. And from what I heard from interviews and just the stuff that I picked up on articles or video interviews, it's just that both of them, they might collide a few times on musical decisions. In all fairness, this is just my humble opinion, or from what I picked up on, Dan the Automator tends to be somewhat a little bit arrogant, maybe. That's just how he comes off. He might be the sweetest guy ever. On the other hand, if you're a music producer and you have a strong vision, you want to be strong about it. In my personal taste, do I wish they had more collaborations? I kind of wish yes, but I also feel like Dan the Automator might overpower Cool Keith in certain ways where it's not for the benefit of the project. I think Cool Keith works best if you just let him do what he wants to do and you just kind of cater to that but I feel Dan the Automator has this very strong beats vision and wants to probably not compromise as much. I think they had beef like I think they didn't talk for a long long time after the Dr. Octagon project and now only recently they got together for part two of Dr. Octagon. Well there's other Dr. Octagons but this is basically the official part two. Yeah but do yourself a favor, 100%, buy this album, check it out, it's really, really good. Don't try to comment, don't tell me how to run my stable, plus your car, leave your fingers bleeding on the table, no time for games, baby talking hubba blubber, your style is plastic, your girl talking rubber. I'm the king of New York, running out for big cities. Alright guys, now I have a special one. You ready? This is a record you surely want to listen to at night. It's Dr. Doom, first come, first served. What in the fuck? What the fuck was in your mind when you rapped on that track? Who possessed you to do that? Who programmed that shit sound whack? Unplug your mic, you motherfuckers rap under a bunch of fucking hype. Programmed by the company making some G-Focus sound like a nigga with no door in a promo. This album has some great fucking dark humor, man. Just listen to songs like Housing Authorities with Motion Man. It starts off with this intro, like really gloomy and kind of doomish. The tension just keeps rising until those hammering drums set in and Motion Man kicks it off with some fucking ill verses, man. Aqua Gill next shark bite beach tower Bay Area conquistador Negro reservation sniper tree trunk squirrel monkey agility Ultimate fight night pay-per-view ability Angel flight superhero platform shoe stomp down return smack sniff and afro hairy chest being Another killer track would be body bags with this weird Chinese kind of string instrument sample That's a fucking weird song man Stop dragging dead elephants in department stores where people shop with a briefcase from Spellman, I have to tell men, get off my back. I'm working overtime like a janitor with stamina. Buried the last bodies in Canada. In Toronto, I used to jerk off in a tin room condo. With serious surgery, Dr. Doom working in the office building. Driving some Bronco like OJ Simpson. Nervous smoking a pack of Winston's. Another great song on the album is Neighbors Next Door featuring Jackie Jasper. Jackie Jasper has always been a very strong feature for Cool Keith. Parked in the parking lot behind Burger King eating a raw pack of chicken wings. With blood on my fingers, I blast the CD by the staple singers. The cops told me to turn it down. They like my shoes from Buster Brown. I went up the block and bought some incense for the bone smells in the air conditioner vent. Hey kid, need 20 cents having a cookout with my neighbor. How you like the meat flavor? Mm. So if you're a horror fan and a rap music fan, that's your album, man. Dr. Doom, first come, first serve with Cutmaster Kurt. Awesome shit. And now I want to show you my favorite song. The best song, in my opinion, on the album. It's the song Apartment 223. Apartment 223 with body parts under my bed. Cut your abdomen out. Stab your fucking leather coat. I chant while candles burn with robes on. You will learn. Christian, no Hebrew on the balcony. I see you. The devil's coffins with corpse, of course, in a mental state earthquake, schizophrenic eating Campbell's soup. Okay, so here we are in the year 1996, underground indie rap music changed 
for the better when this dropped. Dr. Octagon. First patient, pull out the skull, remove the cancer. Breaking his back, chisel next for the answer. Supersonic, bionic, robot, voodoo power, equator, X, my chance to flex skills on Ampex. This is the European version. I fucking hate this cover. It's so crap, man. This is Dr. Octagon. I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know what's the deal with this. I don't even know what it is. Like some MRI, whatever it's called. Scan. <laughs> Moax, you fucked up. It's the three vinyl release. It has bonus tracks though, which I like. Biology 101, it's a really great song. I fucking hate that it's not on this one. It should be on, on the official CD or official release. Carbon dioxide, you messing with the chemicals, warfare, different stars and atmosphere like Haley's comic computers that'll make you vomit. Change the earth's south saliva running your mouth, gastric juice more beyond since Mother Goose created shapes the first man with hairy apes. 7.35 p.m. ETD. Overpop spraying crops like DDT. The first arrival of Apollo 13 beaming down through raindrops while pieces hit the scene. Now what makes Dr. Octagon so special? Why is it still talked about? First of all, we have a great production by Dan the Automator. He uses a lot of great, great samples. We have live instruments, live guitar, live bass. So it's a very well-rounded album. On top we have Cool Keith, very unpredictable, unconventional rap style, which was introduced to the mainstream audience on this album. Let's check out 3000. I crank up lyrical flows, spit, spats. What's that? The pattern records. Don't touch the dats. Yo, check out the pro skills, metaphor fills. Contact, react, the style, I'm back, you lack. Okay, so who is Dr. Octagon? Dr. Octagon is a serial killer slash gynecologist alien entity. He is killing people, he is sexing up the ladies. I got a mask at home, boots and some leather gear. How about me and you in black? I'm hitting from the back, telling my face and all juicy brown booty. I'm the master of the splits, let me do my duty, girl, let me touch you. If I'm also honest, there are also some few songs on this album, which I kind of skip. I skip, for example, Bear Witness. I think it's kind of a little bit annoying. I don't like it at all. I'm destructive. It's a song with the with the guitar riff. I'm, I'm just not digging it. I think maybe at that time it was kind of cool and innovative to use the guitar to kind of cross over to rock music. I find it kind of a little bit tedious. Wild and crazy. I'm also not so wild and crazy about that song. But on the other hand, we have super, super strong songs. Half Shark, Alligator, Half Man. I love that one. Let's listen to Half Shark, Half Alligator, Half Man. Wait, Half Shark, Alligator, Half Man. Half Shark, Alligator, Half Man. Man, check it out. Three alligators behind me, feel my skin is hard. Transvestites and people watch space parasites. I left his head in the store, legs in the street. Body your will cox with blood dripping off my feet. LAPD through gray clouds, couldn't see me. I first turned rainbow, close my eyes, watch my brain glow. Obviously, the legendary Blue Flowers is probably the most known track of this album. In one of my earlier videos, I called it the best rap song ever, my favorite rap song ever. Blue Flowers, check it out. Holding bags on down right from the hospital. It's a patient that's worth to keep the germs off the turf. Cybernetic microscopes and metal antidotes. Two telescopes that magnify the size of a roach. The computers to cup a coffee planet with my hand and astral planet detached, turn on rare foggers. It's probably his most important album. Let's let's face it. That's it's pro it's it's his most important album. That's who cool Keith is known for Dr. Octagon. I think he kind of hated it, that he was so defined over this album. Everybody wanted him to just do another Dr. Octagon, whereas Cool Keith wanted to evolve and jump through all the styles with Sex Style or Black Elvis, Dr. Doom, to just play around. He's versatile. Cool Keith is not just Dr. Octagon. If that would be the case, I wouldn't make that video because quite frankly, it's a great album, but Cool Keith is the sum of all of his styles, of all of his characters. So I'm glad that he didn't jump right into doing the next one with Dan the Automator at that time, but he moved on and did other great, 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 great albums. So let's do the same and jump to the next one. Ha! <sighs> Diesel Truckers. Diesel Truckers, Truckers, Truckers. You are the best. Format checked and road, hit from city to city, the gritty, the committee, the master with trailers overloaded, Santa Fe out the New York City, the gear changer, downhill vocal rearranger. With Cutmaster Kurt released in 2004, Threshold Recordings, re Threshold Records again. Whoop, whoop. What can I say about these truckers? If I want to listen to Cool Keith and I want to just make sure, whoo, I'm going to be grooving. 
I'm gonna be vibing. I'll put on this bad boy. It's fantastic, it's really, it's a fun record, that's the thing. It's not a philosophical record, it's not anything super serious, it's just a fun record. My favorite song from that record is Metal Side Effects, check it out. Some other favorites would be I Love You Nancy. Rest in peace, Nancy Des Rose. I love you, Nancy. I wanna take you on exotic boat rides. I love you, lady. I don't wanna argue with you no more. I love you, Nancy. Give you things you never dreamed of. I love you, baby. I wanna stay in the house. I love I just like the samples, everything is really bouncy, crispy, just really banging, without sounding clubbish. I love your sweet eyelashes, your dark skin flavor. Every morning going to school on the elevator, soft and nicely, the girl entice me. Diamonds on a watch, she rock a ice beat. It's a really dynamic record, puts me in a good mood. Also, every summer I put on that record. I don't know why, it just periodically comes back kind of in my plate as well, I put it there but I put it there because I want to listen to it. So what's the concept of the whole album? It's basically what it says, uh, right here, diesel truckers. You get Foley sounds like honking the horns and you hear the machines and whatnot. <laughs> if you're into that, I'm into that. I like rap songs where they put Foley sounds in there, like street noise, ambulance sirens, police sirens, whatever. Explosions, helicopter sounds. I produced a song where I put helicopter sounds. I don't know why I like that stuff. I think it's the connection to making music kind of movie-ish to tell a story. I like that element in songs. And with these are truckers, you get that. Moving on swiftly, the next album I want to talk about is when Cut Massacred and Cool Keith teamed up again. Almost 10 years after the first time they teamed up for the same named record, it's Dr. Doom 2. What's the real word on the urgy man? White people love me like Fergie man. Move out on the highway in a black Ford. My black and deck equipment in the dirty van. Take an octagon and a coffin up the seat, Dan. Nearly 10 years after the first Doctor Doom, in 2008, Cutmaster Kurt and Cool Keith dropped Doctor Doom 2. Now, how good is this album? Can it keep up with the first one? Do you even want to compare it with it? That's totally up to you. My personal taste and my opinion about this album is it falls a bit short. It lacks the quirkiness and the edginess of the first album which made it so incredible and which gave the first Doctor Doom such a high re-listen value because it's so weird and so out there. So compared to the first Doctor Doom, Doctor Doom 2 falls a bit flat. It's a bit bland. Cutmaster Kurt still has a lot of good samples but they are not arranged in a quirky way as it was on Doctor Doom 1. It just lacks the spark. It's not as hard hitting as the first one. Don't get me wrong, all the songs are pretty fucking solid. There's no song that is really shit or not listenable, but overall the full album just misses this oomph, this kick in the nuts. It's not there. Nonetheless, you have really good songs. My favorite song from the album is Talking Out Your Ass. Always Talking Out Your Ass has this really nice sample which is kind of floaty, dreamlike and spheric. It's a really dope song. Let's have a listen. I remember when chicks used to fuck a superstar. Now they want you to meet their boyfriend and go home with them and meet their brother in the car and play some rapper who's trying to be cool, Keith. That shit is bizarre. They get sick on the floor and drugs like Anna Nicole Smith. Vomiting every night, they taking it too far. After I get off stage, they want to hop to another bar. The next song that I like is similar to the other song that I just showed you. It's also a little bit floaty and dreamlike. It's a song called How Sexy with Dennis Deft as a feature, who we know from the Bikinis and Thongs album already. I used to play that game with girls, time up to the bed. I would not force them, they offer to give me head. Kinky books late at night, we read. I had this freak chick with a nice tail and blonde dreads. I took her to the Sunset Palm Springs beds. 
And one night my space date was a fish fillet plate. On this album we also have a feature producer for one song, for the song named The God of Rap, where he teams up with Tom C3, who we already know from the project Polaroid project. Sitting up like a chick with a bad mood. I bless you, step off the phantom and eat bad food. The world think you dope, they hound coke. Kareem Abdul be a fool. He can't make the sky hook right now. Get out the Maybach and show and prove. Chicks can't see these feces spinning in the toilet stool. Flush to calm down the Hudson. Your girl wanna shake the hands with the cool. And the last song I want to present to you is the song called I'm Creepin, which has this really kind of comical, cartoonish beat to it. <laughs> it's a real fun song and it totally has this whole Doctor Doom vibe to it. So, great song, I'm Creepin. Your legs soaking the pop for a full course. Too much for a full horse. Three rhinoceros, Mr. Snuffleupagus. She weighs us about as much as all of us. I'm Creepin, cutting up tonight. Yeah. I'm Creepin. At your party, that's right. Yeah. So overall, Doctor Doom 2, definitely not a bad album, but just a little bit too timid and a little bit too shy and not crazy enough, not detailed enough. Everything seems a, maybe a bit rushed compared to the first Doctor Doom, which was so detailed and has so many nice fun skits and just really fun ideas, whereas Doctor Doom 2 just seems like it's kept basic. I think you could have done way more with it, but definitely, definitely a solid production, so check it out. Yo, next I want to have a look at the Cenobites, which is Cool Keith and Godfather Dawn. MC's in New York, everyone whacking her. He dance for and take him pay all the cash in her. Another check spin and wreck too much in her. Whole lot of chunk turning hard on the radio. Initially released in 1995 as an EP, they re-released it in 1997 as an LP and also in 2000 as a CD. This CD has the eight tracks plus two bonus tracks, which are two remixes. The Senior Bites album is definitely old schoolish. You can hear from the beats arrangement, the drums, how they loop. It's kind it has this early 90s vibe to it. All the samples are really jazzy and moody and dark, kind of reminiscent of A Much Better Tomorrow. Although A Much Better Tomorrow produced by Dan the Automator sounds a bit more timeless than this. This is definitely some early 90s shit. I see this cutie fine honey out in Disney World. We took a picture with Mickey Mouse, still in Texas. Two blocks from home in Yankee Stadium. I went inside McDonald's and got a cup of tea. Unfortunately, I couldn't find out whether the name Cenobites stems from the movie Hellraiser. The only thing I found online was that it's related to monks, whereas the cover would kind of indicate we are on some weird horrorcore shit. But this wouldn't be a Cool Keith project if it wouldn't have some sort of horror elements or some wackiness to it and some sort of abstract weirdness. Just check out the song called Rhymes I Sniff, aka Carlos Died. That's a weird fucking track, man. Then I'm dope, nigga. I smoke opponents like glass stick. So don't step to me, bro. Unless you got a needle. I'm not fucking weak. Fucking up dope, man. Bombs are slip. Fucking up dope, man. And again, my favorite song of this album is a song that is kind of lofty and dreamlike. It's the song called Keep On featuring Bobito. Check it out. I walk in peace with the passion Metamorphosize into it won't speak cause I'm crashing And also another really great track from this album also has Bobito on this track rapping and it's called Kick a Dope Verse and I like how Bobito raps he sounds really gnarly, kinda aggressive, raw it's good energy, the whole album has really good raw energy old school jazz funkalicious shit I write my own shit from finish to start Diminish the heart I eat a canish and then I part A trasket, a trisket, a golden air biscuit Cool keep ass me to rhyme and so I kick it Nervous, surface Never even heard this, leaving hers wordless Because it just served it So this is 100% a solid album If you're a Cool Keith fan, get your hands on it You wanna have this in your collection for sure Send your bites So now let's talk about the last collaboration of Cool Keith and Dan the Automator It's fresh out 
It's the new Dr. Octagon Moose Bombs, an exploration into modern day horror palation. Octagon in the octagon hat with octagon underwear, taking the octagon bath with octagon soap, octagon motorcycle made by octagon bikes. Stand up late in octagon heights, living that octagon life. Kinda sounds like a good continuation to the first album. Like there's also a song with a rock guitar. One elbow, big like a bank roll. Pass off the garnet, move around, give and go. Half slow, cut and grab. With the lawnmower. I got the Kama Sutra in the Sutra. It's all done alright, I guess, but it just something is just rubbing me the wrong way about this man. The spark is missing. And what I get from the interviews that I saw about this album is just I don't think Cool Keith and Dan the Automator have a good chemistry together personally. I don't think they have fun together in the studio. Like in, in interviews which I saw, it always felt like Dan the Automator is kind of, how can I say, I don't know, belittling Cool Keith or... To me it seemed more like Dan the Automator is collaborating with Cool Keith not because he really really wants to and he believes it's a musical honor to do that but more so because he knows he needs Cool Keith to actually do a Dr. Octagon. I should be really hyped about this. Um, I'm not. I don't know. I'm way more hyped about Cool Keith doing his own shit now, producing his own albums, some good, some really crappy, whatever. But he is doing his thing. Whereas this feels more like they done it because of... This was a secure album to get media attention. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm totally wrong. If I'm totally wrong, maybe in two years I do another video and I'm like, oh, I fuck man, I fucked up. This is the greatest shit ever. So yeah, that's the newest one, 2018. We'll see how this will age and maybe grow on me. Dr. Octagon, the new one. Convertible beetle bug lover, undercover in the romance with this beautiful type of mama, the porno star genre. Also with Moose Bumps, Dan the Automator released Dr. Octagon Moose Bumps, an exploration of modern day horror, blah blah, the SP-1200 remixes. Penicillin, penicillin, reactivate forces, fly around with utensils reporting, no dimension while recording, Dr. Bounce the basketballs in the hospital wearing Jordans, your girl drooling with sweat pouring, sonic music laser ray around your ears with the chorus. Now I haven't listened to the whole thing, I skipped through and it sounded pretty good actually. I will definitely have to give it more of a listen. What confuses me is I have not heard of this as a big release or anything like this seems to be more like a collector's item or he published it kind of sneakily I don't know if you like the Moose Bumps LP I'm pretty certain you would probably like this one as well it has this nice old-school feel to it as all the beats are made with the sampler SP 1200 which is the classic sampler all the legends used when they started doing hip-hop beats definitely check it out if you can get your hands on it you might like it Enemy, hold your head in your hand while fake oatmeal Cookies in that stove Sprinkle pepper on your dog with oregano He did it again, he has another fucking album Simply entitled Keith and it's brand new. I don't even have a copy yet here. I ordered it, but it's not here yet But I've listened to it and I made some notes New York City Max style, let the lion ground New York City Max style, let the lion ground. 95 South. Right out the gate, the album is fantastic. It was a great idea to team up with Psycho Less from Beat Nuts. I have four favorite tracks. I'm not gonna show you all of them, but I'm definitely gonna start out with my fucking favorite song of the whole album. It's called Word Life and it's amazing. It's an amazing beat. The whole sample is kind of weird, eerie, creepy. It sounds like a little bit mafia style and also horror style. It's something that maybe Necro would cook up. Word Life, check it out. Amazing track, my favorite track. Your girl release moisture, like Xbox control, I'm enjoying her. Like meat hanging up in the warehouse, they can't seem to ship the verbs out. The tight parts make you dance and look like a mouse. All my jock straps design like Gioni Versace house. Your wife on the knees in the lot. Another great track from the album is called Holy Water, where you have this synthy beat that's really banging, really crisp, really nice. Holy Water, great track, check it out. It's like TD Jake, my pen is holy with material, the words are spiritual. Literature non-fictional, let me sprinkle you with holy water in the devil costumes. 
Fear no evil light shine on your head from the moon. The preacher pull up, hop out the phantom, that's mad, finish maroon. The next song I want to present to you is called Plush Mink. And it's a really uplifting song and Cool Keith uses autotune on his voice, which I usually don't like, but here in that song it really works for him. And the flute sample that is used by Psycho Lass is really nice, wide and open. And you can really tell Cool Keith is most relaxed when he's rapping about his favorite topic, which in this song and always is the sexy lady. So check out Plush Mink. Plush Mink inside, Plush Mink inside. Sprinkle her with salt and pepper, see her pearls. She inherit her lip dark red like a bowl of cherries. Toast her with the aces on ice, the moment make her wet. The young key sweat, shower you with confetti. Put the boo in Betty, watch her crawl in red bottoms. Like a scorpion in the teddy. And then we have songs like Slave Owner and She Answer, which are really relaxed and kind of laid back, I want to say. And then we bring the fucking banger up with Turn the Level, and it rises the energy right back up. It uses a great sample. Just a fucking banger song. Check it out. Turn the Level. I'm so nice, I can drive a car with no steering wheel. Make the fake people move out in the Hollywood Hills. Add seven doors on each side, cut off the roof. Off the Cadillac Seville, y'all ass bill. I'm sitting in the back seat with a chauffeur, taking show off pills. I got calves, y'all might want to keep your skinny legs concealed. The entire album just sounds really well produced. It's really well rounded. You can obviously tell that someone produced it who's in the game for a long time. It has a really nice sound to it. Even songs that are more simplistic and even sound something like Cool Keith would come up with. They have high production quality to it. And it's really nice to listen to album from top to bottom, front to back. I'm really happy to present this album as the final album of this video and the most recent album that he released. So, well done on that. Keith. I want to give a quick shout out to a few songs that you need to check out where he was collaborating on someone else's project. Check out the song that he did with Burgundy Blood called Image of a Dawn. It's on the EP Comet Suede by Burgundy Blood. Burgundy Blood is the producer and rapper on that EP slash art project. Really cool video. Check it out. It's on YouTube. It's really, really good. Next song you need to check out is a song called Accurate Force with this Netherland female rapper called Elysia. Eli great song, really cool. They have a great dynamic together. Hopefully he will team up with her again. Maybe have like a 50-50 album, kind of like he had with uh, Nancy Des Rosie. I think that would be really good. They work together very well. Also, he did a song called Abandoned Ship with Heart Kiss. I had to Google them. I didn't know who Heart Kiss was. It was some kind of, I don't want to say techno, but like electronical music production. I think it was like in the mid 90s abandoned ship with hard kiss check that ship the last song I want to recommend you check out is called stuck in the past it's produced by Keith science which I first thought is just another alias so he produced it himself no Keith science is some producer out there stuck in the past great song as well so check out these songs check them out Holy fucking shit, I came up with the task of narrowing all of his albums, even the collaborative albums, his solo albums, early albums, new albums, all of them to my top 10. To decide for myself, to make a final fucking decision and say which one are my top 10 favorite album of Cool Keith. So I did it and I'm pretty fucking happy with it. So let's get started with my top 10 Cool Keith favorite albums. <laughs> I mean, my stuff has been so different from everybody else's stuff to people think that maybe I'm weird. You know, I have people around me down in every little thing that I made, every cover, you know, everything that I wanted to do, from the shirt to advertisement to me being Dr. Octagon. And right out the gate, we start off number 10 with a controversial decision, but it's not just one album, but it's two albums. And it is Controller of Trap, 
And couple of slices, my number 10. I fucking love couple of slices. It took me a bit to get used to it. At first I thought it, it's kind of popish and Cool Keith is not really engaged in this album. He's not really there. But after giving it a couple of listens and like really listen through the whole thing, it's amazing. It's fucking, it's a very atmospheric album. It's very lofty and dreamlike and very soft. And it's really nice to listen to. Yeah, that's why it's my number 10. Ray West, Cool Keith, couple of slices. Great fucking album. I'm the reason y'all call me Twitter. I'm in everyone's cellular phone. Those with the babies bring the belly of home. Hat with the feather. Your mom called me Donnell Jones with the wet underwear. After work, she go through the climax moans. Also my number 10, Controller of Trap. I love this album. 12 banger tracks. It was such a surprise when it came out last year. I didn't really have it on my radar at all. And ever since, I don't stop listening to it. It puts me in a fucking great mood. It's uplifting. It's positive. I don't know if it's positive. But it's good. I fucking love it. So, controller of trap, don't sleep on it. Also, my number 10. Farmer suits and farmland. See my arm on a box of arm and hammer, man. I thought the count was moist. How come I'm on dry land? A lot of artists in the business bluffing. Cooking with pots and pans. VH1 with Miss New York. They ain't even better than the rapper Chance. How you look in the tank at the fish glance? My rank number nine was basically, it had to come down between Matthew, Spankmaster, and the first Lost Master. To me, they're kind of in the same vibe. When I want to listen to this, I might as well listen to this, I might as well listen to this. Even though Spank Master is a bit more different because it's not as rough, not as dark, not as battle rappy. So my number nine out of these three is actually... Spank Master. I love this album. So many good fucking weird songs on it. For example, I'ma Tell You. What the hell? <laughs> Mac Trucks, Drugs, Jewelry Shine, fucking great party track, Maxing in the Shades, Big Frank. I love this whole album, man. The whole feel to it is kind of weird, kind of different. Spankmaster, my number nine. Spectacular. Bust a rhyme, kid, bust that. Nigga, fuck that. We on the move and the girls and they love that. My shit is on tight, flowing with the gun right. Computer level, where you going? What you saying, brother? Next, we have number eight on my Cool Keith top ten favorite albums. It is my number eight. Tayshawn Dorset. And why is this my number eight? Because usually people, I think they don't find it strong or it's mediocre or blah, 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 blah. I like this album. It's a very, it's a summer album, that's for sure. All the beats sound kind of Middle Eastern-ish. They have a sunny vibe to it. We have great features on it. We have really strong beats on this, like this. LP is fucking banging. So I don't see why people wouldn't like it. I don't really care. I play it very often. That's why Tayshanda said is my number eight. You ever try to wonder? <laughs> my verses appear in your glamour like spiritual scriptures, like the city reminiscing over the same MCs constantly over and over. It'll take a guy like me in the dark room to destroy that picture. Number seven on my favorite Cool Keith album list is, whoo, this was a tight one. Sex Style, The Unreleased Archive. And why did I chose this over the original Sex Style? It's because the original Sex Style has one or two tracks that I really fucking don't like. They go on my nerves and I skip them. Here, not <laughs> such a thing. I have to skip no track and it's fucking amazing. The production on it, the groove to it, it's a groovy album. I feel like it's a little hidden gem because it's the unreleased archive. Cutmaster Kurt produced all of it and yeah, dude. Unreleased sex style archive, Mwah! exquisite. That's why this is my number seven. You got nothing right now, trying to milk a cow. Six fools in the house, how you like me now? Getting served in bed, desserts on the head, three-time winner, naked star, I'm a thoroughbred. Remember me? No, I don't. Where I know you from? Remember me? No, I don't. Where I know you from? Okie doke. Here we come to number six. And this one is a fucking special one, and I'm so fucking happy that I have it on vinyl. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's finally, I have it. Project Polaroid, self-entitled album, Project Polaroid, Tom C3, 
and Cool Keith doing this awesome fake movie soundtrack, Project Polaroid. Yeah man, what is there to say about this album? It's groovy, it's fucking organic, it's it's crickly crackly, it's kind of still slept on I guess, or people might know about it, but no one really talks about it, I don't know why, this is great. This is a great fucking album, Cool Keith on top of his game, although people say he's uh, too slow in his reps, which might be true, a little bit, but the overall album is fucking amazing, and I have it on vinyl, signed. Gracias. So, Project Polaroid, my number six. The bars is open. Everybody order your M stealth. Put the hot dog on the grill. Roll that fell. Don't tell Blunt about the new dance. Call the elephant front. With Kelly this month. The bellies we hunt. The pack bell phone. The cellies we want. Number five. Who? What might that be? <laughs> My number five is actually, that's gonna be a surprise. I don't think anyone puts this album in their top 10 when they speak about Cool Keith. Oh no, I showed it. It's the White Label album. And the full title would be White Label Mix Series Volume 1 with Nancy Desrosier. I fucking love this album. Is it good? Probably not. Is it bad? Maybe. But it has a few strong songs and like I said in my review before, I even, I love the bad songs, the bad songs as well. I don't know what it is, it's probably the charm of the whole production, the charm of the two people involved, which is Nancy Desrosier and Cool Keith, just bouncing off each other, having really good dynamic energy with each other. And yeah man, this is a fucking, I love this album. I listen to it a lot. So there you go, my number five, the White Label album. Boop, boop, boop. Saw the clothes in the hampers, warned everybody, including your hype men. Global maximum urine, piss on the core of the city. Leave a New York police department with pampers. With KL's chicken, baby. My uncle's Colonel Sanders. Watch the mixtape, niggas don't even know yet. Pressing up homosexuals that ain't even pro yet. All right, now it's getting serious. And I'm saying that because I know people get serious about these albums. So, my number four favorite Cool Keith album. And it's gonna be weird to you. Don't feel awkward because this is probably lower than you expected. <laughs> it is Dr. Octagon. Yeah, it is. What can I say about Dr. Octagon that hasn't been said millions of times before? Probably it's my number four. I don't think anyone has it on their number four. They probably put it on the Cool Keith list on number one. For me, it's number four because like I mentioned in the review, there's uh, two, three songs that I'm not wild and crazy about. But the rest, obviously, it's fucking strong. But this album is competing against my top three that you will see, which will follow. And those other three albums I just listened to even more than that. Nonetheless, Dr. Octagon, obviously, fucking strong album. No doubt about that. Groundbreaking for rap music. It's a milestone. My number four, Dr. Octagon. First patient, pull out the skull, remove the cancer. Breaking his back, chisel next for the answer. Supersonic, bionic, robot, voodoo power, equator, X my chance to flex skills on Ampex with power meters and heaters, gauge, antifreeze, octagon, oxygen, and aluminum intoxicants. All right, compadres, my number three is who the personal album. Love this album, love every fucking track of it. I love that it's so smooth. It's a really nice album for a summer night. Have a glass of wine and play this bad boy. Maybe, you know, you're on a date. Hopefully. My number three, the personal album. Ooh. On the premises properly, I deal with models like three part harmony with skill like the bra, hair cover the side of your face. I get to see just a little more from the backside. Show me one of your eyes. The professional photographer. Professional photographer. Professional. Professional photographer. Moving along swiftly, because I know you're really antsy to find out what is my number two, what is my number one, what is my number two, and my number one. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And I'm glad that I'm wearing this outfit because now we're talking about my number two on my Cool Keith top ten favorite albums list. And my number two is mm -mm, Mac Trucks. Woo! It's the Diesel Truckers with 
Cut Master Curd. Great fucking album, super bouncy, super dynamic. It fucking puts me in a good mood every time I listen to it. It's groovy, it's funkalicious. I love the whole concept of it. Granted, the whole trucker theme is not 100% in every fucking song, but it's dominant and you have a great cover. I don't even know what to say to this. This is such a given to me. I don't know. I, I must have listened to this album over a million times, so that's why my number two, it can only be this fucking album. It's Diesel Truckers, dude. I love your sweet eyelashes, your dark skin flavor. Every morning going to school on the elevator. Soft and nicely, the girl enticed me. Diamonds on a watch, she rock a ice beam. With a North Face coat, apple bottom jeans. The Eldorado was smooth when the Mac lean. And now, the Holy Grail. Mwah. My number one, the best album, according to me, my favorite album of Cool Keith ever produced out of his hundred million solo albums, collaborative albums, old school albums, new school albums, whatever. My favorite album is... Do, 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 do. It's Dr. Doom. Number one. I'm a horror movie fan, so this is basically a given that I fucking love this album. Tracks like Apartment 223, Housing Authority, just the way they rap about all this serial killer type themed stuff. It's just really, I fucking love it. In combination with Cutmaster Kurt's really awkward, weird beats. It's an amazing experience. It's an amazing album. It's even an amazing cover. Dr. Doom for me is my number one favorite Cool Keith album. It might not even be the one that I listen to most because it is not as easy accessible as maybe the personal album or a couple of slices. It's more edgy. It's rough around the edges, but that's what I like about it. It has character. It's a one of a kind album in rap music and probably in music in general. There's no other album like this. Dr. Doom. This is where it's at. Fucking get your hands on it. My number one, it's Dr. Doom. What the fuck was in your mind when you rapped on that track? Who possessed you to do that? Who programmed that shit sound whack? Unplug your mic, you motherfuckers rap under a bunch of fucking hype. Programmed by the company making something G vocal sound like a nigga with no door in a promo. Making asses out of yourself trying to rap solo. Suck my dick when you see me, avoid me cause you wanna beat me. Y'all niggas write like slouches, puffing blunts on studio cautions. What's up, you fucking amateur, your engineer Q and your bullshit cadence? So yeah man, that was my top 10 favorite Cool Keith albums of all fucking times. I hope you liked it, I had fun doing it, and i catch you later. A big disappointment when I rub your asshole with a verbal ointment.